Assalamualaikum. Today we have Brother Amen here with us to discuss the Muslim portrayal in the media. So the first question I have for you, Brother Amen, is there are some stereotypes when it comes to Muslims in movies. What are your opinions on this topic and these stereotypes? Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Assalamu alaykum wa ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Khatim wa sallamadeen. Munatabaa wa ihsan ya muddeen. Jazakumullah khairan samaya for preparing this interview. Uh, so if I understood correctly your question, what's my opinion on stereotypes that are made in the media about Muslims? Right, so maybe before we, uh, we talk about that, let's just uh, briefly share a few uh, thoughts about media in general. Um, so as you probably know, media is such a, an a powerful tool uh, for any community. And a community that does not have media outlets that it can control and can uh, broadcast from is really a community that's disadvantaged. And uh, when you look around, you find different communities uh, utilizing different avenues for media. Some have newspapers, some have business directories, some have uh, TV stations, others might have a radio station or an internet uh, station or broadcast and, and so forth. So uh, unfortunately, when a community doesn't have these resources, it becomes dependent on What's whatever is out there. And media is one of these things, uh, just like um, higher education institutes, for example, and private schools, uh, they're promoting a philosophy. They're promoting a set of values and, and principles. Uh, so, you know, you have uh, radio stations that are, for example, publicly funded, and they would be to some degree neutral, presenting or representing the opinion of the general masses and so forth. So when it comes to uh, the Muslim community, uh, currently at a national scale, we don't really have, uh, you know, these many media outlets. There are a couple of uh, um, TV stations that run on the internet. Uh, they're more regional, I would say. I mean, they're on the internet, but they're not widely known to the most people and definitely not to mainstream America. Uh, there are decent number of local newspapers here in the Washington DC area we had until very recently the Muslim link it started uh, actually by a group of young uh, girls just like yourself who were uh, I believe in eighth grade at a local school here Hoda school in College Park it was a school project and you know basically at the end of the school year the, the teachers and the people in the organization were really intrigued by it so it turned out to become a real newspaper and it was around for a good number of years, probably a couple of decades. I remember reading it as far back as probably 1997, 98, I can't remember the exact dates, but for the 2000s, it was definitely around, definitely before 9-11, and it was there till probably uh, 2018 or, or something like that, very recently. I mean, their website is still up. You can go and see their most recent post, I, I think was as of 2019, 18. The point is for 20 years, we had that local resource. Uh, there are similar newspapers like these around the country. I know in Chicago land, there's one, uh, New Jersey, there's one. Uh, so you'll find a few of those. And uh, Muslim Inc. was so powerful locally here because it helped us uh, to kind of, this is where your question comes in, uh, mitigate these stereotypes. It helped us provide uh, a true image of who we are, what we stand up for. So it reflected our values and philosophy. It reflected, it had articles by community members. It had articles by young people, by community leaders. It had advertisements by businesses. Uh, schools wrote uh, little pieces of editorials. So it reflected the fabric of the local community and hence our values and it mitigated some of these stereotypes. So uh, what do I think about stereotypes? I think um, stereotypes are, are of two, two natures, intentional and uh, unintentional. Intentional ones are uh, promoted by people who are fearful of the values and principles that you bring to society, right? So if you call for a society that does not have interest, that does not abuse the needy and those who are in financial difficulties needing loans to, to fund you know, whatever they're trying to do, uh, there will be people who don't like that. There are bankers out there who make a living off of interest. The whole banking industry is, is based on that. So there will be people who intentionally 
um, are going to stereotype you, right? They're going to say um, this group represents some way that is not right, and they're going to promote that. Then there's another group who's uh, ignorant. They just don't know. They, they lack information, they lack knowledge, they get their knowledge from mainstream media. And whatever is conveyed to them, you know, through books or literature or, or content is what they know and learn. And that's kind of, um, they re repeat it, you know. Most people repeat information without validating it. So that's kind of my thought. Um, we need to be vigilant about which type it is. And if it's uh, ignorance, we need to educate people on our uh, causes and values and principles. And if it is intentional, we need to um, be prepared to to, uh, to face those types of allegations and stereotypes. And for the second question, I have, in many movies that feature a Muslim girl's character, she gets oppressed and wants to leave the religion. What advice would you give Muslim youth who view these types of films and are swayed by these stories? In general, uh, it's important that we don't promote negative things in general. Uh, the prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, was someone who always inspired people, always shared good news. So in general, regardless what that content is, uh, if we come across something that's demeaning or uh, a misrepresentation of a group of people, regardless who they are, we should not promote it. We should not reshare it or comment on it. Uh, the best thing is to leave things to die off. Right. Um, I was just uh, looking into something the other day yesterday. I can't remember what it was, but uh, oh, there was a, a book, a book that um, an author wrote recently. Uh, it's Snowden. Now I remember. So Snowden, you guys know uh, um, uh, the, the former CI contractor or NSA contractor. He. Uh, he wrote a book where he exposed um, some of the abuses in the U.S. government, and <clears throat> uh, he did not not go through certain chains of approval to review the book prior to publishing. So the government, uh, when they knew about the book is being published, they decided to um, put a court order to halt its publishing, and and that went up to the media, and actually it helped promote his book. Um, rather than stop it, which is what they intended. Uh, so what he was sharing is like he got the best promotion by, you know, attorney general uh, kind of publicizing his, his book. So similarly, if you come across a content like that, the first tip I would give people, young people, is don't share it. Don't even talk about it. You can uh, keep it to yourself. You can share it with, with people in private circles for advice, you know, just like kind of what you're doing now. Um, but I would not share that content because the more you share it, the more public it becomes. And that's exactly what the author wants. Uh, the other thing is that uh, to keep in mind, tip number two is anyone can say anything, right? Uh, that's a lesson I learned some 20 years ago. One of my mentors, uh, she was preparing me for a public speech and I was a little kind of hesitant and, and she uh, kind of was calming down. She said, anyone can say anything. Um, but that's not the point. The point is not talking. The point is talking intelligently. And the point is talking with, with confidence. So similarly, people would say anything. They'd say um, this group is that or that group is this. It really doesn't matter what people's opinions are. Uh, the tip I give the youth here is to understand themselves, right? To have a clear understanding of your identity. Uh, what do you stand for? Who are you? Why are you wearing the scarf on your head? If, if you're a young sister and you're wearing a scarf on your head and you don't know why, uh, you shouldn't be doing that. It's not, you know, you're not just copying other people. You should really understand the wisdom behind it. You should understand the values behind it. And uh, part of that understanding is that it's part of your identity, who you are. It's part of your, um, your faith. And by having that level of understanding, you'll, you'll be confident and you're not going to be worried about what other people say. So that's the second tip is um, we need to be confident people, have a strong understanding of who we are and not worry about what other people say about us. Uh, so those are two important things to, to keep in mind. Uh, number three is I would look at that content, right, with a critical eye and see why are they portraying this young Muslimah 
as someone who's oppressed? Why is in their mind that image of uh, a female with a headscarf equate to oppression, right? And what you will find through some critical thinking could be various reasons, but a common reason is because society has accepted that um, uh, an immodest female is a symbol of liberation. They would use, um, you know, certain uh, depictions of females on certain types of commercials so that they can uh, show how this product of, that's being presented in this commercial is of uh, a certain attractive value, right? And, and that's a very demeaning uh, thing to do to a person or a female is to use uh, a race or a gender or a group of people as a method to promote our uh, ideas and, and so forth. So really, but set and oppressed and you know whatever all these negative thoughts. Uh, look at it. The more independent you are, the more empowered you are. And, and obviously, that's not a, a correct. Um, perspective, but that's what society has, has learned over a number of decades, maybe even centuries. So really it becomes a trigger, an inspiration for these young Muslims and, and other people of, of value to educate the masses, to educate society on the correct you know, understanding of who people are and how to promote certain products or, or other things. Uh, so that's how I would look at these things and not take them personally. Well, you somewhat touched on the answer for the third question, but in the media, Muslim men are seen as oppressors, although Muslim women are weak and oppressed. Why do you think they're portrayed this way? Okay, I'll try to be shorter so I don't jump into the next question. Um, that's also a good question. And really here, I mean, part of it, like you said, I covered in the previous discussion. Uh, but another thing is there is some reality to it. And, and that's also where we need to... Um, to have our own media channels and, and outlets so we can also bring to uh, our own attention um, not only uh, positive things in our communities, but also real problems, real challenges, and how can we uh, find or brainstorm solutions for it. So uh, there is some truth that there are some men in general, Muslim or otherwise, who are oppressive, right? Uh, they don't take care of their families, um, when we look at the American society in general, so let's, let's focus on the bigger society in general. Uh, most men, um, not most men, I should, I should restate this. There are a lot of men who are oppressive. Um, examples, uh, someone who's young in high school or college and he dates a girl and then she gets pregnant and now there's a child, but they're not married. That's a form of oppression. Because now um, he has deprived this child from a, from a dad. He has deprived this lady or woman from a, a true husband, someone who has true obligations and responsibilities under God and under the law to look after her and her needs. That's a form of oppression. So um, children out of wedlock is definitely a, a huge oppression to uh, not only the child, but the child's mother, and society at large, because what ends up happening quite a bit is these children become dependent on society. They, they end up getting food stamps and they getting, uh, end up uh, having problems with education and healthcare and, and a lot of issues. And I do come across some, once in a while um, uh, single moms who uh, are having trouble getting a birth certificate for their child because they lost the original one, the father is nowhere to be found, and the state has to go through a long process. We're talking months of, of time to get that document. And now she's stuck. She can't take the kid to a school or get him immunizations or whatever is needed for this, this kid to live a, a normal life. So that's uh, a, a severe form of oppression. And unfortunately, uh, our society does not see it as such. Our society sees it as freedom of, uh, of practice of whatever people want to do, as long as it's consensual, they say it's, you know, whatever people want to do. But that's, uh, that's a big, you know, uh, that's a big uh, lack of information and incredible understanding of the whole idea of a relationship in a marriage. 
Um, but in the Muslim community, we don't have this type of oppression too much. Alhamdulillah, that's a blessing from Allah. We have people who get married, they start families, but then the difficulties of life uh, start to pound on, pile up on this couple. And we sometimes see that the dad, the father, or the husband just leaves the house and disappears, leaving the mom with her kids to take care of them. Uh, sometimes these dads might send some money over, a couple of hundred bucks, whatever, a month. Sometimes they don't. And that's another form of oppression. It's, it's lesser than the first one we talked about, but it's still pretty significant because, again, now this woman is kind of raising her family on her own, uh, and she kind of got betrayed. Her husband just disappeared and left her. Um, sometimes they get divorced, other times they don't. And that kind of keeps her kind of hanging in there until she can get divorced by, by courts. Um, so there is some truth to it, right? And um, we need to be objective. Again, media is all about, uh, proper good media is about credibility and objectivity, is conveying facts, uh, not, not twisting them, not you know, keeping pieces of information unmentioned, which gives a, a distorted image of the truth and not uh, adding to the, the story unreal information either, but conveying it objectively with intention. So this is where the Muslim media comes in. The intention is not the likes or the advertising minutes, but the intention is to propagate truth. So a Muslim uh, journalist or a Muslim media outlet, their mission is to propagate the truth. What is the truth? Is the word of God. What does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messengers say about this, this matter? So you brought up a matter which is uh, domestic abuse or oppression. What does our deen say about it? It says there's many rights and obligations. And if we are to report on this, we have to report it on it objectively. Next question I have for you is, what is your opinion on this comment? It's not the religion that's oppressive. Maybe it's the culture. Uh, good question. So there's definitely a difference between culture and religion. Um, the faith is what we believe in as communicated through our dear beloved prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, which was communicated to him by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, God Almighty. And that's what uh, we practice. These are the, the rituals, the creed, you know, our understanding of the principles of the religion, the faith, and, and so forth. Culture is what uh, different societies and communities uh, come up with for you know, um, their convenience or just the tradition. So you would see, for example, I see you're wearing a headscarf in some parts of the world that wear it just the way you are. Uh, in other parts, it might be a little different, but at the end of the day, it's still a headscarf. At the end of the day, uh, any Muslim who's properly educated and practicing understands that uh, as part of modesty of a female, she will be wearing a headscarf. Now, uh, you know, what, what color is it? Or, you know, does it have flowers on it? Or is it black and white or colorful or whatever? These are cultural differences, which are totally acceptable and fine uh, in our faith. So you'll find Malaysian, you know, women wearing the headscarf a little different than Chinese women, than Middle Eastern, than European or American or Latinos. Um, so you are right. There is a difference between the faith and the culture. And of course, similarly, uh, th there's no oppression in our faith. I mean, the faith is a faith of, of mercy. The prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, was sent as a mercy to mankind, as we know from the verse in the Quran. Uh, but what happens is people misinterpret certain parts of the faith. So um, some people, whoever it is, I mean, there's oppression between, uh, against men as well from women, um, you know, whether they're married or not, um, where certain cultures believe that the wife has to, um, has to bring up her husband on certain principles and ways of life early in their marriage to control the household. That's a cultural thing. It's not in, in our faith. And similarly, in other faiths, uh, in other cultures, uh, in the Islamic uh, world, culture does suppose oppression that could take multiple forms, not just between genders, but it could be between races, it could be between different age groups, 
you know, and different backgrounds. Last question I have for you today is how would you suggest Muslims approach the issue of inc incorrect portrayal in the media? So I think it's kind of like similar to what we mentioned earlier about the example you gave of um, women being, you know, represented as oppressed in the media. Um, being educated is number one, right? So if you're not educated, it's hard for you to distinguish right from wrong or truth from, from ignorance. Um, so just like anyone else, Muslim youth and Muslims in general need to be educated. So when we see something, we can, you know, figure out if it's right or wrong. So that's number one. Uh, so how do we get educated, especially young people? Read a lot. Read from credible resources. When I say read, I don't just mean go on the internet and browse, but read real books with written by real authors that are binded, you know, hard copy books. Look at things with a critical eye. As uh, the so the first point we said is to be educated, read, and uh, understand what what the truth is and what people are saying and where they are coming from. Number two is you have your own voice. So express your voice. Your videos like this one you're doing, uh, people can make posts. Don't be consumers of social media, but also be producers of social media. So um, especially young people, don't just go and like comments and put your, uh, your thumbs up, but also add content. Create your own flyers, create your own pictures, your own video content, your own text, you know, messages, whatever. And it's really easy today on Twitter and Instagram and all these social media platforms that people are on. Um, the other thing is, is hold, uh, hold, you know, thought leadership discussions. So young Muslims can come together like yourself. You can bring six, seven, eight young people together on a video call like this. And the same questions you're asking, ask it to the, to the group. And you don't have to be scholars or experts in the domain. Uh, your discussion could be uh, a research discussion. You ask the question, everyone on the call says, I, I don't know the answer, let's look it up. And someone brings up a reference, a PDF of a book, or they, they open a chapter of a book online, or they go look on the internet. But these types of, of thought leadership, we call them thought leadership, meaning it, it helps uh, your thoughts become leading thoughts. They, they, these thoughts become influential. They become uh, motivating and inspiring for yourself and others. So these are discussions that you can also have. And I think having these type of uh, rich discussions is another way to combat uh, media that's, you know, inaccurate. Jazakallah khairan, Brother Ayman. Thank you for your time and the very valuable knowledge that you shared with us. It was very much appreciated. Wa'iyakum, jazakallah khairan. Thank you very much.